Okay, everyone. Welcome back to the Black Carnivore live stream, and I'm excited to be here tonight. And uh, yeah, I wanted to talk about, um, you know, my favorite foods, what I eat in a day, how, uh, you know, what's a normal carnivore day of eating. I think uh, that's one of the things that is, um, you know, most uh, difficult to wrap your head around as a beginner, like what that actually looks like. So, uh, you know, I just kind of wanted to talk about it a little bit today. Um, I was thinking before I might do a tour of my refrigerator, but it is um, really boring. It's like totally, totally empty, except for the meat that I take down for the current day. So um, there's not really a lot to look at. Uh, okay. Hey, everybody. Johnny G. Welcome. Good to see you. Uh, Meat-Based Musings. Hi. Still I Rise. Welcome. Uh, I'm glad to see you all. Okay. Uh, I'm doing something a little bit different with my lighting, so uh, if that looks a little weird, sorry about that. Um, still, you know, so always a work in progress. Uh, okay, so um, let me know what are the types of things that you are you guys are eating, and uh, you know what do you like? Uh, I try to post. I still try to post as much as I can on Instagram, like the things that I make or the things that um, you know that I see that I like. Uh, you know, I'm always mentioning that guy um, Jack Rustin, who is you know just makes these amazing looking roasts and uh, you know just like various kinds of meat things. So uh, you know, I always post that. Uh, I think that when people get started with carnivore, they sort of have this idea that it's a very complicated thing to do and that there's like really hard, you know, meat stuff to do. And, um, you know, you can like get into these uh, um, long cooking recipes or, uh, you know, recipes that require a little bit, bit of know-how, but um, there's also really fast and easy things to cook. So, you know, I just kind of wanted to cover some of that. Um, so that, you know, you know that this is something that can be done easily. Uh, you know, I sure do like a roast, but uh, I don't always feel like doing that kind of thing. Um, okay. Hey, Kim, Jolene, welcome. Lorraine, hi. It's good to see you again. Welcome. And uh, Kim would love to hear what everyone is eating today. Yeah, I'd love to hear that too. So go ahead and put that in um the, you know, in the chat uh, as well, because I would love to hear that too. So uh, as if you're, if you're a follower of mine on Instagram, and I encourage you to, because I do post there a lot, uh, you see that I'm posting about my chuck chunks all the time. So that is one of the easiest things I find to cook. Um, I, you know, I, I, when I get a roast, uh, basically, you know, I might come home with 10 pounds of chuck roast. And, you know, it's like in one piece and I will cut it into slices of, that are about like a pound or something like that. And then, uh, you know, I'll wrap each in, you know, one pound slice individually in aluminum foil and then put that in the freezer. And then on, at any given day, I take down like two pounds of meat. Um, so I never have more than two pounds of meat in the refrigerator, in the refrigerator at one time. And in fact, it's usually on the counter defrosting. I've taken it down in the morning. So, uh, you know, I do, I, I think that it is important for me to do that because one, you know, I get to keep sort of that fresh flavor of meat, you know, as meat ages, as, as all food ages, it produces histamines and some people can have a reaction to that. Um, but you know, fresh meat tastes nice. And so, uh, you know, the fresher it is, the better. So, uh, so that's kind of the way I handle meat when I get home from the grocery store. So I don't, I don't keep a lot like in the refrigerator. And, um, and so when I make the chuck chunks, I, uh, you know, I slice, so like I said, I slice the, uh, the chuck roast into, um, one pound slices. And then that piece, I will cut it into, you know, cubes. I mean, basically I'm aiming for cubes that are bite-sized or, you know, about the size of like a large, you know, 
die from like a board game or something. So, you know, you want the individual piece to be one piece that you would put in your mouth. You don't have to break it into a smaller bite. It's just a one bite of food. And, uh, you know, so I cut that up. Um, one thing that you will want on the carnivore diet is a sharp knife. I cannot <laughs> stress this enough. And I have the worst knives, you know, I have a, like a set from Ikea. It's terrible. Um, but you know, I got like a sharpener and I keep sharpening it and, um, you know, it's terrible, I'm sure, but it gets the job done, um, you know, each time that I need to use it, but you, you do need a sharp knife. It's going to make this a lot easier. Uh, so you just cut it into small pieces, you salt it liberally, and then I put all of it into the air fryer. Make sure not to overcrowd the air fryer because then it will take longer. And I cook it, you know, six to eight minutes. It depends on, you know, how big the pieces are, uh, you know, whether the air fryer is hot when I put the, the pieces in um, already. And, uh, you know, and just, I don't know, some days like it comes out more brown and other days less brown. So, you know, it needs more time. So, uh, so yeah, that's how I do that. Now, uh, some people cook pork belly the same way. So, you know, you might consider that as well. Um, pork belly takes longer to cook. I've definitely done it that way. Um, and, uh, you know, it, I, I may need to do it longer. And sometimes I find that the, um, the pork fat smokes in the air fryer. Um, I don't know why it does, but lard doesn't. So, I mean, but uh, tallow or the beef fat doesn't. But, um, you know, that's, that's something to note. So let me know if you guys have ever done that. Let's see. Uh, so Erica Erica Erkins is um, eating cube steak and chuck roast today. Ah, oh, that's awesome. Lorraine is having sirloin with butter in the morning and three fried eggs late afternoon. Sounds good. Hey, Heather, welcome. Tell us what you're eating today. E. Taylor says, uh, peace um, and, uh, oh, peace to me and to the chat. Thank you, E. Taylor. I appreciate that. Uh, Still I Rise had 80-20 ground chuck patties with scrambled eggs and cheese today. Yum. That sounds delightful. Um, and may I suggest uh, goat cheese? When uh, when I first started doing keto, I I started using goat cheese in my scrambled eggs, and oh my god, it was so good! I was like, I didn't even know goat cheese was good. So good. Uh, okay, E. Taylor had one and a half pounds of ninety two eight Costco ground beef. Okay, um, so you like it lean? Uh, tell us how uh, how that feels for you. Um, but that sounds good. Uh, meat-based musings. Um, do you, so do I put the aluminum foil wrapped meat in something else like a Ziploc? Uh, so if I have multiple kinds of meat that I'm putting in the freezer, then yes. Cause I am, I do try to like, you know, be able to know, um, which meat is what, you know? So yes, I, I will do that if I, um, have multiple kinds of meat in the freezer at once. Uh, Johnny G says cling wrap or freezer bags at, uh, cling wrap or freezer bags. Yeah. And I had some, uh, two liter giant, um, bags for that weren't like, they were like clothing bags or things that you can put other things in. And, um, so I was using that for a while. Uh, let's see. Kim Jolene says I had bacon, egg, sausage, and salmon and shrimp today. Wow you have hit the rainbow and that sounds great. So fantastic. Um, Heather said today I had ground beef and cheated with a few strips of bacon. Um, that, uh, that sounds great. Uh, but why is bacon cheating? Did, did you decide you were doing like a, a month of beef salt, beef, salt and water? Uh, let me know about that. Um, okay. Johnny G says, uh, yeah, at Kim, you win. Uh-huh. Um, so, uh, yeah, so I, the chuck chunks is, um, my favorite recipe. And then, uh, I do love scrambled eggs. Um, 
you know, I try to be careful about how often I eat them because, you know, as I've told a lot of you, um, you know, eggs is one of those things that a lot of people actually surprisingly do have sensitivities to. So, uh, and I have off and on over the years, um, been able to eat them and then got sick with them and then been able to eat them and then they made me sick. So right now I'm in a phase where I can eat them and I don't want to abuse that. So I do eat them, but I try not to eat them so many days in a row and so much of them. And uh, that way, you know, I can keep my exposure low and hopefully, you know, not like develop a problem. Um, But not everybody is like that. Okay. Um, Let's see. Vanessa has sugar-free bacon and sausage with scrambled eggs. Yeah, that is good. Um, And Heather says, yes, because I said it would be an all beef month. Okay. All right. So what happened? We're only a few days into the month and you, and you already went for the pig. Um, let us know, let us know what happened. Uh, (laughs) and Kim says, I, I'm off of beef right now. So I'm trying, um, different meals, hence the variety. Oh, okay. Uh, and meat based musing says, I don't use aluminum foil to store things in much. Um, Okay. Uh, is that, is there a health concern or is that just not something you use? Um, yeah, I don't really know what else to use in the freezer, but yeah, aluminum foil, you know, is, is kind of a go-to. Uh, okay. So, uh, so scrambled eggs is, is another, you know, quick go-to that, uh, I use. And, uh, even though I don't put cheese in it anymore, I use lots of butter and that tastes delicious. So that's good. Uh, and then, um, another one that I use a lot is, uh, my meatballs. So, uh, it's just, uh, balls of meat. So I basically, you know, I have a cutting board on my countertop and, uh, you know, I take a a pound of ground beef and, you know, again, like if I, when I buy ground beef, I'm, I still freeze like one pound, um, uh, units so that I can take down smaller amounts at a time and I don't have to take it all down. So, uh, you know, I'll have a a pound of ground beef and, uh, you know, I sort of open it up on the, um, on the butcher block and then, uh, you know, salt it liberally, uh, and then, uh, you know, sort of mix it up. And then I, you know, just use my hands to create balls. And, uh, I, you know, the meatballs are about, I think one to one and a half ounces of, uh, meat. So, you know, they actually constitute like, um, two, sometimes three bites. Uh, so I don't know, I might think about making them smaller in the future. So they really are just one bite of food. Uh, I do, you know, like that (laughs) bite size food. Um, and, uh, so I don't know, but if, so one pound, uh, I think that makes, I don't know. I feel like it makes like 12, 11, um, meatballs, but, uh, you know, using a pound of beef, um, but I, you know, I can't remember. And so, you know, I just ball it up, make, you know, the, the, uh, the meatloaf, um, the meatball and then put it in an air fryer and cook it, uh, usually about eight minutes. And, uh, you know, I just check to see if it's done, but, um, you know, eight minutes usually does it pretty good, eight or nine minutes. And, uh, there you go. And it, you know, it will render some fat. So I pour the fat, you know, on top of it. Um, but you can also make a sauce. Uh, so one of the things I love is when I make the oxtail, it, you know, it has uh, this, uh, rich and beautiful sauce with it that, uh, you know, I will, um, use an immersion blender and kind of make it very thick and, and emulsify the sauce. And I'll use that for dipping other meats in. So dipping the meatballs in, it's very good. Um, in the, the challenge, um, some of the folks have started using uh, curry paste mixed with heavy whipping cream to make kind of like, a, you know, a red, a red sauce, a red curry, um, you know, creamy sauce, which um, 
you know, it's not something maybe you want to do every day, but if you don't have a problem with, uh, you know, with dairy and you don't have a problem with the heavy whipping cream, it's certainly, you know, certainly worth doing, uh, and trying, you know? So I think that might make a really interesting sauce for the, um, you know, for the meatballs. And, uh, and I was, uh, you know, somebody else was telling me about a sauce that they make with vinegar, mustard, and some herbs and spices. So, uh, you know, there's some things that you can play around with there. And then some people use fish sauce, which, um, I think is made from anchovies. So if you don't have sensitivities to fish, you know, that's something to think about as well. I think it's made from fermented anchovies. So let me know and you know, all in the chat, if you've ever tried fish sauce, I'd love to hear about that. Uh, okay, uh, let's see. Uh, Kim says, I want to attempt fish other than salmon and canned tuna. Any suggestions? Uh, yeah, that is a great question because everybody gets stuck on salmon and ground um, and, and tuna. So uh, please, everybody jump in on that. Um, Fish is very expensive, so, you know, it's not something I go to all the time, but, you know, of course, there is the the shellfish. I do love scallops. Uh, lobster is good. Crab is good. Um, I love Chilean sea bass, but that costs a fortune. Um, any kind of bass, though, I think is good. And, uh, you know, uh, some people like mahi-mahi. I don't really like that one, but there are definitely people who like it. So I think that kind of gives you an array of different flavors. Oh, I love cod. That's another one. And haddock. Oh, haddock is really good. I would get that. Okay. Um, uh, so Meat Based Using says, no, he no health concerns. I just always use Ziplocs and Saran Wrap. Um, I'm up to trying it. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. I I don't know. I guess I don't really have a reason. I just, that's what my grandparents used. It's my mom used. So I just was like, okay, that's how you do it. Uh, okay. Heather G says, I don't know. I think I allowed myself to get too hungry because I was working. So I just started eating stuff to fill up. Oh, that's, um, what happened with the bacon. So yes, absolutely. Not planning ahead or, um, you know, being faced with temptation and then, uh, and not having a plan is what will absolutely lead you to those, uh, those depths and, um, you know, into coming off plan. So, you know, it happens. Now you learn and, um, you know, you know that when you get hungry, that's like, a, you know, that can be a trigger for you and you just have to be careful about that. Actually, I got a new order of carnivore crisp today, so I'm pretty excited about that. And I do think that that is, um, you know, for those of you who are working in an office or, you know, you're out and about in your car a lot. Uh, having something like that on hand is like emergency food is a really, um, you know, great idea. And, you know, Heather, that could have been something you munched on, um, you know, as you were, uh, you know, in the afternoon as well to fill up. So, um, Hey, Kimberly, welcome. I'm so glad to see you. Uh, Heather says a curry sauce sounds good, but I try to limit the heavy cream. Yeah, definitely. Um, and, you know, I wonder for those of you who, who want to skip the heavy cream, well, I wonder how many of you eat yogurt, like Greek yogurt or something like full fat Greek yogurt. And how, you know, how do you respond to it? Like, I sometimes wonder if, you know, yogurt is better because it's, you know, fermented milk products. Um, you know, I wonder if it's better for you or if people have a better response. Um, so yeah, just let me know. Um, cause it might be, you know, it might be equally good mixed in yogurt in um, heavy, uh, in a, a full fat, um, Greek yogurt. Okay. Uh, Johnny G says I'm running low on tallow, uh, fee free tallow from you. Uh, oh, <laughs> so tallow, uh, your meatball. So, uh, here I come meatballs. Okay. <laughs> just trying to get that. You're running low on meat on aloe and you want to take my, my uh, leftover fat from my meatballs. 
Uh, Kimberly Wright, I am not pain free, but I believe I'm getting there. Bless the name of uh, my Lord. Yes. Um, so uh, that is awesome. I'm so glad that you are, uh, you know, working, you are getting close to getting pain free. I mean, that is definitely uh, the point of this way of eating. And I have seen a lot of people get there. You know, that is a very common um, you know, a common occurrence. And uh, even for longstanding intractable, intractable uh, pain, uh, a lot of people find relief. So, uh, you know, I'm really excited about that. You know, the, um, it just takes, sometimes it just takes time, but you know, you'll definitely get there and please keep us posted on that. Uh, Meat-based musing says fish sauce is good with beef. I've added it to chili before. Oh, interesting. Interesting. Um, Johnny G says smoked cod is nice. Yes, I totally agree. Um, Kimberly uh, says sardines is um, always wild caught and I pay $1.75 per can. Mm -hmm. So sardines are a great option. You know, uh, you know, well, we're told a lot that, you know, you have to be careful about, uh, you know, fish and, and food from the ocean because a lot of the times it's contaminated or the bigger fish, uh, you know, accumulate like mercury and other toxins in their flesh. And so you have to be careful about that. So, you know, I don't know if that is something that's of concern for you, but um, we are told that it's safest to eat the smallest fish because there isn't any, you know, toxin accumulation. And so things like sardines and mackerel and herring and stuff like that um, are, you know, supposed to be very safe choices. So that's something to think about. So yeah, thanks for bringing up the, um, you know, the canned sardines, uh, Johnny too. Yeah. I need to do some kind of cooking, uh, a sauce class, especially. Yes. Well, that is the one thing that I missed most about going carnivore. You know, when I, I always liked, um, you know, that I liked mayo on very specific things and, uh, like tuna salad. I, loved a lot of mayo in that deviled egg, a lot of mayo in that, um, you know, certain kind of sandwiches, a lot of mayo. And so, uh, you know, I get to carnivore and it's like, you can have all this butter, but frankly, when you take a hot piece of steak and you dip it in butter, like it all completely melts. And there is a limit to how much fat can, you know, be, uh, vehicled into your mouth on a piece of meat. So until you can get that emulsified texture that you get with mayo, you cannot take large amounts of fat and get it inside your mouth. So um, I, you know, so yeah, I've been like on a hunt and I don't know what happened, but last fall, like, I guess, well, God, this must have been more than a year ago. I made some kind of sauce. I think I, I made oxtails. There was all the sauce left over. I used my immersion blender to blend it. And somehow it made like mayo or more like an aioli type texture. But, you know, that was enough, you know, holding together for it to be really amazing. And I kept dipping my meatballs into it. And I would have some left over, so I saved it, and then I would make a new batch, and I would add some more, you know, fat and, like, broth, and I would mix it, and it kept making it, and then finally I completely ran out, and then I went to start anew with, like, a new, um, you know, batch of broth and new fat, and I was never able to do it again. So I have no idea why, what happened to be in this particular batch of broth that helped it to emulsify to the point where it turned into like, you know, a near, a near mayo. Um, so there you go. That's, that's, uh, that's what compels me <laughs> to move forward on these sauces. Uh, okay. Kimberly says sardines. Um, well, sardines or an anchovies, uh, and mackerel, um, is also good. Yeah. Meat based musings. You have mackerel, uh, don't be afraid to try it. Some people really like it. I have not tried it yet. So I, you know, I'm, I'm sorry there, but, um, Arian has talked about how much he really likes these. Um, and I know he was saying, uh, he had gotten some smoked herring, canned smoked herring and, uh, thought it was delicious, but it was just far too expensive for, you know, what he wanted to spend. But, um, yeah, so I would look around. Yeah. 
So uh, Johnny G says yogurt is better for cream than weight loss. Um, yeah, I, I wonder. That, that doesn't seem surprising. Um, all right, Lorraine says smoked oysters are a good quick food, really full of protein, and 1,100 milligrams of omega-3. Yeah, um, yeah. So I, I think the, the small fish are really a great option, and they usually have, what, a lot of vitamin D as well. And Island Girl says fish sauce is my replacement for barbecue sauce. Oh, wow. Interesting. Okay. So how much do you use? Or I'm sort of thinking about if you have like a rack of ribs and you brush it down with barbecue sauce, is that the same? Do you do like the same thing with the fish sauce or how does that work? I'd love to hear about it. Uh, Kimberly says I'm learning to just dip my meat in the butter or, uh, sometimes I just let the butter stay out in the counter until it is room temperature. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, room temperature butter is very nice. I gotta say, um, I appreciate that. And, uh, and Kimberly says you can just smooth the butter on over your meat with salt. Delicious. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you can definitely do that, but it melts. It melts so quickly. Um, okay. So another, uh, so wait, what, what did I go over? I did the, uh, chuck chunks, the scrambled eggs, and, um, we did talk about, uh, canned fish, which is easy. A lot of people just eat them straight out of the can. Uh, so that's, that's pretty good. Um, something and, uh, pork belly in the air fryer. Um, and, uh, what else? Oh, and I said the meatballs and, uh, what else did I say that I wanted to talk about quick? So the other things, um, the other things that I cook generally take longer. So, um, there are, uh, well, uh, actually no. So the flank and cut short ribs, that is another favorite of mine. Now I, um, so I've talked about that frequently that's, you know, where you see that long rectangular strip of beef and there's like six pieces of bone in it. You know, it's a slip, uh, a cross, um, section of the, uh, of the ribs. So, uh, that is flank and cut, um, short ribs and they're so good, nice and fatty, really delicious, very flavorful. Uh, so I definitely recommend that. And I cook that, you know, I, I salt them, um, heavily, uh, on either side and then cook it for about 10 minutes in the air fryer. Um, so, you know, that's magic. I love that. Uh, and then, um, you know, and so those are, that's like a good selection of, uh, you know, things that can be cooked pretty easily, pretty quickly. And I don't know if you all have done this, but you know, you can cook from frozen in the air fryer. I feel like it does work, but, um, I don't really love the results, but if you've forgotten to take something out, you know, there is that as an option. Uh, and, and these, so these are all pretty quick, you know, under 15 minutes making a meal and I definitely recommend them. Uh, okay. Island girl says, uh, you use the fish sauce for dipping only about two tablespoons. Oh, okay. I see. Um, and Johnny G says Google carnivore mayo. Well, yes. So there is the bacon A's mayo that everyone talks about making, um, you take the, uh, the pan drippings from bacon and you use that to, uh, to make the mayo and it works when you first make it. It's great. It hits that texture and everything, but then you're, you're also left with a ton of mayo and then it's like, okay, what do I do with this? And you put it in the fridge and it gets hard and it loses, you know, it loses that texture. So that is, that's the challenge that I have had with that. But, um, you know, but that's, that's me. Uh, <laughs> I mean, if I could make some, uh, you know, a lot of food at once and, um, you know, and have it be eaten, you know, pretty soon after it's made, then I guess that would be okay. Okay. Meat based musing says I added a bit of fish sauce the last time I made beef shanks. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, I got to try this. I, you know, I have not had the fish sauce, but, um, it sounds really good. Like people are really loving this. So, um, 
Yeah, Johnny G. I, I actually have used butter to mix with egg yolks to make deviled eggs. Um, I, so, you know, uh, so a secret, or maybe it's not a secret. I don't know. I, I really don't like egg whites. <laughs> never have. So, you know, most, the part of the deviled eggs that I like is the egg yolk, you know, mixed with the mayo and the spices and whatnot. So when I have, as a carnivore, made the, uh, the, um, deviled eggs with the egg yolks and the butter, um, I have then just kind of eaten, (laughs) eaten that and just not even stuffed the egg whites, uh, just thrown the egg white out and just gone ahead and eat the yolk mixed with the butter. It is delicious. Um, so I highly recommend it. Yum. And I think that makes a very good dip with like pork rinds or something like that. So yeah. Uh, (laughs) but that's not my everyday fare. Um, that is definitely a, a, a special treat. So, uh, so now I've gone through a bunch of things and I think you all listening have like a pretty good idea of some possible, uh, things to try, you know, it, uh, those were some easy things. Now, just to give you a couple of my favorite, um, more involved things, uh, I do like, I really do like brisket a lot. I think it is a a really tasty and flavorful cut of meat. And, um, if you can find it untrimmed, it has, you know, a very thick fat cap on it, which is very nice. And, uh, you know, and it's a big piece of meat, you know, so it's, it's on the, it's the less expensive, um, you know, cut of meat and given, you know, the pricing now and what's going on in the the world, you know, it's good when you can find uh, a less expensive cut and, and really be able to stretch it and make use of it. So, uh, you know, so, and, uh, oxtails I love, but they're very expensive and, um, uh, you know, I don't know, I don't know what's going on in the world, but things are just getting very expensive. So I do enjoy using my, um, instant pot to, uh, pressure cook and that can, you know, cook, um, things, uh, longer. Uh, but there are the, the cuts of meat that I like most are, you know, the more fatty ones. And those do best when you do, you know, like a low and slow cooking, um, where you're cooking them a long time on, uh, you know, a lowish temperature. And, um, usually it's like a wet cooking method. Um, so whether you're, uh, you know, braising them or simmering them in a pot in the oven, or you're cooking it, um, in a, a, a a crock pot, or you're cooking it in the instant pot, you know, it's a, it's a long and slow, um, and wet method. And, uh, that can, you know, yield some very delicious food. Uh, and it doesn't require, you know, a lot of work or a lot of hands-on stuff. Um, so often I'll see, um, like with a chuck roast, you know, it, it is really nice to sear the meat on the outside that does bring a lot of flavor to the food. So I would encourage you not to skip that step. Um, although it does, you know, it takes more time and, um, you know, it, it does take a while, but, um, it really does add a significant amount of flavor. So, uh, you know, you want to sear the outside of the meat and then you can put it into your, you know, cooking vessel and add whatever water or broth, um, you know, salt and whatever spices, if you're going to add spices and, uh, you know, cover it and cook it for a very long time. And so, uh, you know, usually that is, uh, you know, pretty painless. Like there's not a lot that you're doing, um, you know, with the piece of meat, you're, you're letting it cook, um, on the stove top to get brown, but you know, that's, uh, again, not very hands-on. You just put it in there. There's a lot of, you want to put it in a pan that's got, you know, a lot of fat in it. So it's not going into a dry pan. Um, you put it in and you let it brown and you turn it over, come back to the kitchen, you know, turn it over again and so on. So, uh, so I hope that helps. Um, let's see. Uh, Johnny G says egg yolk mayo is a thing. Just use an immersion blender and a small cup. Yep. Yeah. Um, okay. Meat based using says that might be good with steak egg yolk filling. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, yeah, egg yolk filling is good with everything. I think. I agree. And Johnny G, um, yeah, 8 8 needs a smoker. 8 8 needs a backyard. And then I would have a smoker permanently on hand, permanently operating, round the clock, making delicious stuff. So, yeah, definitely. So, uh, yeah, I hope that um, helps you get some ideas of, uh, you know, other things to do. So on a daily basis, the way I'm eating now is three meals a day. I, um, I don't feel like I do well when I try to um, have these long fasting periods. So I've put that aside for now and I'm doing three meals a day. And, uh, you know, I'd love to hear from you what you guys are doing. I think, you know, I, it's there's a range of things that people do on carnivore. So, again, if you're just getting started, please, please don't feel like you need to sit down to a two-pound ribeye once a day. That is going to be terrible. Your stomach is going to totally rebel. Um, just uh, eat smaller meals, salt your food liberally, and uh, don't try to drink liquid fat. Um, eat fatty cuts of meat that have solid fat on them, but don't, you know, just try to eat a lot of rendered fat because that's going to send you to the bathroom and, uh, you know, eat smaller, more frequent meals if you need to. And in the very beginning, you know, if you're just trying to get into ketosis, um, you, you know, you're going to have a lot of cravings because you're basically, um, you know, you're, you're trying to run down the fat that, uh, sorry, to run down the sugar that's in your system so that you can turn over and uh, switch to burning fat for energy. Your body can't do both at once. So you got to run out of the, the sugar and then you switch over to the fat. So when you're in that, um, you know, that period where you're really low on sugar and you haven't switched over to fat, um, or you've just switched over, but you're not good at using or making it or using it, um, you're just going to feel tired and bad because you're having an energy crisis. Like your body literally doesn't have enough calories and energy to do what it wants to or needs to do. So it, you're going to, it's going to be keep sending you cravings for sugar and carbs and stuff because that's a quick source of energy and it's known how to use that in the past. So you got to just push on through those moments. You will get to the other side and it will be a thousand times better. So it's totally worth going through that pain, but you just got to go through it. Um, but the best thing to do during those periods is to eat more fat, you know, because, um, your fat is an energy that if that's the main energy source that you're going to be using, um, not sugar anymore, fat. And so eating fat will help you, um, you know, and also when people get started on carnivore, a lot of times, you know, your appetite goes away. You've gone from like, you know, being hungry all the time and, you know, you, you ate sugar for breakfast and sugar for, you know, mid morning snack and donuts and, you know, all kinds of stuff that kept you constantly um, hungry. And so when you start eating this way, all of a sudden, like all that goes away. And so a lot of times people are like, oh, thank God. And then they just kind of stop eating, which, you know, can feel awesome. But you do, you know, you do need food, you do need nutrition, and you do need calories. And so, um, you know, you don't want to go too far with that. And so um, if you are getting a lot of cravings in the beginning, just it's fine. It's eat, eat some fat, you know, eat some bacon, eat some beef fat trimmings, eat something very fatty. And, um, and that will help you. And, uh, you know, once you get through that early transition period, you know, then you want to stop snacking, but, um, you know, in the early days you can do that. So, uh, yeah. So I hope that, uh, you know, let me know if that helps or if you guys have any other suggestions of, um, you know, favorite meals. Uh, I try to pick things that aren't too expensive. I mean, I know there are people um, who who have the means and, uh, you know, are lucky enough to have uh, ribeyes every day. And uh, I sure would eat that a lot if I could. Um but, uh, but there are, you know, there's definitely other kinds of, uh, you know, animal foods out there to have. So I, you know, I don't want you to kind of get stuck thinking that you have to have, you know, one thing, um, or, or the most expensive thing. Um, so, you know, mix it up, try to, you know, try to 
find different things and, um, and experiment. And, uh, and I will, uh, you know, continue to try to, to put that kind of stuff up there, um, and, and put, you know, that information out there. Uh, okay. So, uh, <laughs> Johnny G says the spit rotisserie. Yeah. Yeah. I would, um, it, well, I don't know what they do at the Brazilian steakhouses. Uh, you know, I, if I could have whatever, you know, however they're making the meat, that's what I would want going. Um, okay. Tova says, Hey, a day, this is off topic. Um, I'd like to do your challenges, but I'm not on Facebook and don't want to reopen an account. Is there any way to do this? Um, at this time there is not, but you know, if I, you know, I would like to, um, be able to keep a community like that going. And so, um, if, you know, there's enough interest, uh, I'd be open to creating a community that, you know, of, um, like there's different networks and things that help you to sort of create a community so you can have like a forum and, and message board and all that kind of stuff that's not on Facebook. So, uh, you know, I might be open to doing that, um, in time, but not right now. So, yeah. All right, Lorraine. Uh, oh, good. I'm glad you're enjoying the chat. Um, and Kimberly says, I'm stuffed on one meal a day. I never lost weight uh, eating two meals a day. Even one meal a day for me only helps to maintain my weight. 40 hour, 48 hour dry fasting is how I lose, lose weight. Um, yeah, you know, some people have to do, um, you know, some some more things, but I think it is, um, for, you know, for more, most people in order. So I just want to make sure that, um, sometimes when we do a lot and we really push ourselves, that's when, you know, we can kind of derail our efforts and things fall apart because we're trying to do too much too quickly. So that's why I caution people to, uh, get used to, you know, get into ketosis, kind of get used to eating this way and then kind of layer on these other approaches. So some of the fasting is, um, you know, necessarily, uh, bad, but, um, you know, I think that it's, it's hard to do in the beginning when you're, um, you know, when you're also not in ketosis because when you're fasting, you know, you're not eating and you're also, um, you, you know, if you're not in to ketosis yet, you're not able to, you don't have enough energy to run your body. You know, you, you're not eating the food, your, um, your sugar stores are running out. You're not very good at burning fat yet. So there's just nothing. And, you know, you're going to get cravings in that um, circumstance to eat chocolate because that is a quick and fast energy. Um, so that's all you have to be careful of. Um, just don't do too much. And, uh, you know, so you can stay the course because this is not, you know, this is not, this is a lifestyle. This is not, um, you know, something that you, you're going to be able to do for a little bit, lose the weight that you want and go back, you know, and, and of course, you know, like people will, people will, um, you know, say, oh, well, keto is not sustainable. And, and once you lose the weight, you know, you gain it right back when you go back to eating whatever you were eating. And it's like, of course you do. Like you, you got fat on that because it's, you know, the stuff that you were eating was fattening. Like, yes, if you go back to it, yes, you will gain weight. Um, you know, it's same with carnivore, you get very healthy, a lot of great things will happen. But if you go back to eating, you know, cupcakes and, um, you know, brownies and stuff. Yeah, it's, you know, you're not, you're not going to maintain that, um, you know, that those health gains. But um, I think that this is a really sustainable way to eat. And so I just want to encourage you to do things um, that, you know, support the, the state's sustainability of it. Um, Okay. So Mandel says, do you have recommendations on, on missing ritual? Disrupted patterns can be strong, like cravings of the actions of preparing and having the food. Uh, yeah, I think that is a, uh, a really good point. So, um, you know, a lot of us have all kinds of triggers that make us, you know, crave food or think about, you know, think about things, um, whether it's like, you know, you can have your, your ritual of watching, you know, your favorite TV show and you used to have snacks during it and there was particular snacks that you got. So now you're on doing carnivore and the show comes on and you're like, yes, and let me go get my bowl of, oh, 
nothing. And uh, yeah, that is, that's a ritual that you're going to have to break. And, um, you know, some people are able to do that pretty easily and other people not, or, you know, you decide, okay, it's fine. I'm not going to have my snack. I'm going to go watch my show. And you're sitting around, you know, the rest of the family, six other people who have a bowl of that thing on their lap and they're going like this, watching the show, watching the show. And, you know, you're sitting there for 45 minutes or an hour watching other people do it. Like, you know, the sound of the chewing, whatever might, and the crunching might, might still trigger you. So uh, that's something to think about too. So I think it's important to kind of try to, especially in the early days of doing carnivores, to kind of think ahead to the those situations that you think might do that to you. And, um, you know, and try to have a plan or strategy that will help you make it through those. And, you know, I mean, not every strategy can be anticipated or not every um, problem can be anticipated and not everything can be solved, but, you know, we can do a lot. We can solve a lot. And, um, you know, and then you can just, you just have to get into, you join the challenge, get into the Facebook group or, or join the black carnivore Facebook group, and then ask for help from people and say, Oh my God, you know, I'm at this event or this thing is happening and I don't want to, you know, eat this, help me. And people will do it. People will say, don't eat it. Um, And they will give you that support. So that's like the most important thing to do. Um, Heather, thank you so much for the super chat. I really appreciate it. And this is, uh, you know, to everybody, like when you make these kinds of contributions, it's super helpful. It helps me to be able to continue to provide lots of free uh, content and, um, you know, support for people. I I was like looking through my account and I think I have like three, over 300 videos now. Um, I remember when I did the first one and I can't believe (laughs) I have so many now. So, uh, that's really, that's really awesome. And I, you know, I'm continuing to try to get better. Uh, I, you know, so I, I started making, um, you know, these shorter videos and I'm definitely going to keep doing it. Like basically just answering questions that, um, I think are helpful for a, you know, a broader audience. So definitely if you have ideas for videos or questions that you want answered, definitely send them to me and I will, um, you know, I will do them. Uh, so I'm going to, you know, keep doing those and, uh, and keep putting that out there. So, uh, yeah, so your support means so much. Thank you so much. Um, Johnny G says there's a lot of body recomposition on carnivore. So scale weight loss is slow muscle bone and connective tissue weight is gained on carnivore. Yes, exactly. Exactly. I see that all the time. And so many people are like, Oh my God, I'm not losing weight. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. And then I say, well, are you sure you're not losing weight? Like really? No, no fat at all. And And then, you know, I say, are your clothes fitting differently? And then they'll say, oh, yeah, you know, I had to go go down a pant size. And it's like, well, why are we worried about the scale? Like you're wearing a different size pair of pants. Like that's huge. That's important. So, yeah, absolutely, Johnny G. Um, oh, also, I wanted to bring you uh, to your your attention uh, in the chat in the sorry the uh, description of this video. I put a um, a link to a uh, you know a, a free download of like three recipes that you can uh, and a grocery list for you know doing one day of carnivore, and uh, you know so I encourage you to to get that. It's my you know favorite and easiest recipes. But, um, I, you know, I also encourage you to share it. Like I'm starting to see more and more people who, um, have tried carnivore or thinking about it. And, um, you know, and so I, I feel like, you know, maybe more people are somewhat familiar with it. They don't think it's crazy. So this might be something that you share with, uh, you know, with other people who maybe haven't tried it, but have heard about it and were kind of curious This could, you know, help them um, give it a try for a day, you know, and uh, if you're already doing keto, like doing carnivore for a day or a couple of days each week is not really a big deal and it's pretty easy and seamless to do. So that can be a way of helping people sort of ease into it 
And, uh, and then once you try it and you see how amazing it feels, like, you know, you want to keep going. So I encourage you to share that link broadly, uh, download, um, you know, download it yourself, uh, subscribe to the channel. Um, and, uh, so you can be made aware of, uh, more content like this and <laughs> make sure that, um, we, uh, you know, boost, uh, boost the black carnivore channel in the algorithms on YouTube because, um, yeah, I, you know, would love to share this method, m this message more broadly to more people. Um, okay. So are there any more questions? Are there other, or are there other recipes that you guys, um, you know, that you guys use? I'd love to know what else you guys are using the fish sauce for. So, um, and is it something like, it seems like it's a, probably a pretty, um, strong and pungent sauce. So is it like, do you have to dilute it or you just like straight up eat it as it is? Uh, let me know. Um, Johnny G says, link me a lovely message. Um, thank you, A Day. Okay, definitely. Uh, and, um, hmm. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, anybody else have any other questions? Otherwise I think, um, it might be time to sign off. Um, Johnny G says fish sauce is a great seasoning for the slow cooker. Uh, yeah, I am going to, I am definitely going to get some of this, uh, fish sauce. Apparently everybody has been having it, but me. And, um, that makes me a very bad carnivore. So, uh, <laughs> I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to, uh, you know, rectify that very quickly. Um, and, you know, I should probably, I have to think about this, but I'll have to think about like, what is the, you know, what, are, what is the, some of the more exotic things that I've never had that I probably, that I think I should have. So, uh, I definitely, I would put fish sauce in that category. I have had caviar, but I have not had it very often, but I feel like I should have it more often. That's another exotic thing. That's just sort of, you know, just not part of my regular repertoire, but I feel like it should be, I should bring it in and tell me if you have any others that you, that you can think of. Um, Mr. Bogglesworth says, if money wasn't an issue, what would your fridge look like? That is an awesome question. Um, Johnny G's got it absolutely right. Lobster and ribeye. <laughs> that is exactly right. I don't know, Johnny. We are of like one mind. Um, yeah. Um, lobster, ribeye, and butter. <laughs> And maybe I would switch it up with crab some days and, um, you know, sea scallops uh, the other days. But, yeah, that's it. Um, Meat Face Musing says, I'd say I use it the same way I use Worcestershire, Worcestershire sauce. Okay. Um, scallops, floor to ceiling. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, oxtails. Most days I would eat uh, a lot of oxtails. Um, skirt steak. I do like skirt steak. It's just very, you know, it's very expensive. Um, hmm. Chilean sea bass. A lot. I'd have a lot of that. Uh, bone marrow. I would have more bone marrow. I feel like bone marrow, you know, it's not that expensive except you're buying the bone. The bone is huge. It's heavy. And then there's only, you know, so much marrow inside. So it is, it's kind of expensive for what it is. Um, so I would have it more often if it, if I, um, had my druthers. Um, yeah. And Worcestershire sauce, Worcestershire sauce has sugar in it, though. I do find it sweet. So I hope the fish sauce doesn't have any sugar. Uh, yeah. Mandel says, if money were super tight, what would your, your cupboard look like and suggestions for the budget? Um, well, it would look similar to it, what it is today. Um, I would have... Uh, 
you know, I would do ground, a lot of ground meat, ground beef, ground pork, um, that kind of thing. I would, um, I think I would get the, I think the canned fish can be, um, you know, can be more economical, like the, the sardines, uh, the, um, herring, the mackerel, that sort of thing. Uh, eggs, I would definitely do. Um, and, uh, you know, I wouldn't do a lot of spices, which is, you know, where I am now. So there wouldn't be a lot of extra costs there. Um, butter is, you know, pretty expensive fat. So I probably, if I needed to, I would buy tallow and then I would keep saving the fat from cooking stuff. So I wouldn't need to, you know, buy much more fat. And, um, yeah. And, uh, And budget, so yeah, budget wise, I think the ground meats are what's going to be cheapest. If you want some variety, you know, you can move into the more processed things like, you know, hot dogs and sausage and that sort of thing. Um, but, you know, the more processing happens, the more expensive things get. So um, that's not always like, you know, that's not going to help you get the cheapest, um, most nut nutrient dense food. And then of course you will want to add organ meats. Um, those are generally going to be cheaper. So you're going to be able to get liver and kidney, you know, at a lower price, um, for sure. Heart, you know, often will be, you know, can be as low a price as the ground beef. So, uh, you know, so that's, that's an option as well. So let me know, you know, what you, what, what you find and whether any of that works for you, Mandel. And what works for staples to keep around? Uh, uh, Frank's Red Hot Sauce. <laughs> That's a nice staple to keep around. Salt. Um, it's definitely an important staple to keep around. And, um, you know, butter, many people consider a staple and, and always have that on hand. Uh, and eggs, that's another pe thing people consider a staple and always have on hand. So yeah, that's about it. Wow. Tova said I bought frog legs before the new year and can't wait to try. Awesome. Um, yeah, that is, that is definitely, um, exotic. Yeah. I think I did have snails once at a French restaurant. Um, but you know, it mostly tasted like butter and garlic, but, um, not, yeah, that wasn't my favorite, but that was definitely before I was carnivore. I might even have been like, you know, flirting with, you know, vegetarian at the time. Um, okay. Uh, Kimberly oysters and grass fed finished, um, or grass fed, grass finished only. Nice. Um, Mandel, where do you get that? Ask where you get that stuff. I'm not sure which stuff you were talking about. Um, Leslie says fish sauce is a great flavor enhancer. Don't taste it on its own. Don't s smell it. Um, <laughs> are you saying you don't taste it by itself and you don't, um, there's nothing to smell or are you selling, telling us don't smell it because you're not going to like it, but it tastes really good on things. I have a feeling it's the latter. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, Okay. Red Boat brand fish sauce doesn't have sugar. That's good. Um, and, uh, yeah, meat based music says save the pan drippings. And, um, Lorraine says you can make your own, uh, tallow out of suet. Yeah, absolutely. And, um, Johnny G says half a lamb spinning 24 seven over the coals is my go-to if money was no object. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and salmon heads are delicious. That is very exotic, Mr. Bogglesworth. I have heard of people buying salmon belly. Like, I had no idea that you could buy just the belly of salmon. Um, and it didn't occur to me, like, salmon have belly. Of course they do, but it just didn't occur to me. But um, that would be another nice fatty and, uh, you know, tasty piece of meat to get. I don't know. Um Let's see. Mandel says, do you have a preparation recommendation for canned corned beef? Is there anything needed to use drippings from ground beef? Um, so most people will just save the drippings in like, you know, a Pyrex or, you know, an old coffee can or some kind of, you know, container. 
Um, I prefer to strain the drippings before saving it. So I have like a mesh strainer and then I'll put a paper towel in it and then pour the fat through that. So you're pulling out any pieces of meat and you're just leaving the fat. Um, and I also like to uh, only put you know, like kinds of fat together. So beef with beef, lamb with lamb, um, pork with pork, and I don't like to mix them. But that's just me. Other people, you know, or like our grandmothers in, you know, a generation ago, just, you know, saved it all, put it in a little coffee can and just reused it. So I don't know, you know, there might not be a big difference. Uh, and as far as uh, cooking canned corned beef, I don't know. You know, I am only was only recently introduced to this whole corned beef concept. And when Audra came on, remember last fall before Thanksgiving, like, I, you know, I mean, I'd heard of corned beef, but didn't really know what it was. Like, so I don't know. I, I mean, I didn't even know you could buy can, uh, corned beef at the store. Uh, if it's canned, I would assume it's already cooked. So you don't need to do anything, but maybe heat it up and eat it. So I don't know. Um, yeah. Johnny G says faux broths are lovely. Yeah. A lot of people like those. Um, definitely. Uh, okay. Leslie, you're saying <laughs> the fish sauce doesn't smell good. So don't smell it, but it's meant to taste good. <laughs> okay. Mr. Bogglesworth, thank you so much for the super chat. I really appreciate it. And, uh, you know, like I said, this really goes a long way to helping me to, you know, keep this uh, kind of content out there because I, I know it's helpful. And I really want everybody to try this way of eating and, you know, and give it a, a good solid try with the most support um, possible in order to be successful because, um, you know, this can truly be a life changing way of eating. Um, oh, uh, let's see. Oh, Mr. Bogglesworth says, um, the head is fatty and eyes are kind of gelatinous. Okay. <laughs> I, I think that's good. Um, that seems like it might be good. Yeah. Um, Kimberly says, I keep seeing the beef tongue in my local grocery store. It's not expensive, but the thought of eating cow tongue grosses me out. Anyone have encouragement on how I can cook its nutrition? Um, Oh yeah, you're going to have a lot of people jumping in to say it's awesome. So you just got to get that outer tongue part off, but underneath it's very fatty and apparently very good and it is a um, you know, it's a a common ingredient for Mexican tacos. So it's it's quite popular in many places in the world. So um I think people will encourage you. And again, Jack Rustin has this great um, recipe for cooking cow tongue. Where did I, you know, I wrote it down. I got to look through my records because I know I wrote it down and I need to make it public and um, get it out there because it's a nice, it's a nice thing to cook. Um, okay. Lorraine says, be aware, most canned corned beef has sugar. Always read the label. Yes. So this is always a rule always for everybody for on all circumstances, always read the label. You got to assume if a uh, food is, is, uh, packaged, it is most likely, um, it, it has had sugar of some kind added to it. You know, it's, uh, that's just the world that we're living in. So even if it's something that should not have sugar in it, you have to check because a lot of times it will have sugar in it. Um, oh yeah. Douglas is, uh, says the same. So yeah, a lot of sugar everywhere. Um, Leslie says, yes, yeah, so make tacos with the tongue. It's very popular. Um, Mandel says, I use a mesh strainer on my drippings, but couldn't get through a paper towel or coffee filter. Is there something you specially use? Uh, if you couldn't get it through, I would think that, um, one, you don't have that many, uh, you don't have that much, um, drippings left, uh, that need to get strained or, um, you know, it, it, and like you pour it in and, and just the paper towel absorbs the fat. So if you don't have a lot, of course, it's not going to drip through. And um, if it's not hot, it's not going to drip through. It has to be hot. So it's fully liquid. 
um, then it'll go through. But if you don't have that much, then I would just eat it. <laughs> you know, lick the bowl. <laughs> Take that last tablespoon or so that is in there and um, eat it. <laughs> That's right, Leslie, delicious. Okay, so uh, we went over a lot of stuff and I hope that this was really helpful and, um, you know, you're, you're like ready to, uh, you know, keep your carnivore lifestyle going. And I, you know, I guess I would love to know from the veterans or the people who've been doing this a while, you know, what would you say is the biggest challenge for you? You know, do you feel like you get in a rut with food or you get bored with what you make or, you know, you're, um, you know, you're, you're still struggling with cooking. Let me know. Cause I'd be really curious to know, um, you know, for me, like I spent a lot of time in the beginning, like actively teaching myself how to cook. Uh, cause I, I didn't know how, you know, I, I taught, I've always taught myself how to cook. And, um, my, uh, mom, when I was growing up, like hated cooking, she hated the domestic arts, like nothing to do with anything, um, you know, domestic or, you know, feminine. Uh, so we always ordered out. And as a consequence, you know, I always kind of felt like when I grew up, I was going to cook at home and I wanted to eat at a table, not on the floor in front of the TV, not out of a, you know, takeout container, uh, never with plastic utensils, but, you know, real, real knife and fork, real plate. So, um, you know, I, when I grew up, I taught myself to cook and to, to make these things, but, um, you know, I was intimidated by cooking meat. It just seems like a lot and like, I didn't know what to do. And, um, you know, once I got, um, well, once I got the right equipment, I mean, you do certainly need some equipment to, um, you know, to cook meat correctly, but once I got that and understood how to use it and why I was using certain cooking methods with certain types of meat, it made it uh, a lot easier and simpler. Um, so then I was able to branch out and experiment a bit more. So, um, you know, I, so I'm, I, I think that, um, I, you know, I want to help other people and encourage you to, you know, to do the same. So let me know. Um, Let's see. Heather says Mandel can, you can always use a cheesecloth as well to, uh, to strain your fat. Um, Kimberly is asking, what would you say cow dog tastes like ground beef? Yeah, I, I think it tastes beefy. Um, yeah, I think it tastes beefy. And what is the nutrition on cow tongue? It's, um, I, you know, it's not, it's not like eating a piece of liver, but you know, it's high in fat. It's good. It's good as any other part of the cow. Um, Mandel says, do Walmart or Aldi have the big bones for marrow? Uh, I don't know. I would think so though. I mean, any place that's got a, a butcher counter has these things, you know, cause people do eat these things. They get them. Um, you might not, you know, look for them. And so you might, your eye might pass over them while you're at the store, but you know, they're, they're generally there. You just ask the butcher for them. Um, wonderfully made. What's the quickest carnivore meal to make? Uh, scrambled eggs and bacon or my chuck chunks or meatballs. I think those are the quickest things. A, a steak, of course, is always going to be quick. Um, oh, and, uh, the flank and cut short ribs also very quick, 10 under, you know, 10 minutes. So those are good. Um, oh, burgers. Why, how did I forget about burgers? Uh, let's see. Kimberly says ground beef burgers are the quickest, uh, for me or fried eggs. Yeah, absolutely. These are great ideas. Um, do you fry or grill the burgers? So you can do either. Um, Mandel says, I'm still ruining food price of tuition. I guess I mostly eat terribly made food. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Mandel. I'm sorry. Um, I'm not hungry. Uh, like a bad driver, I'm still alive and I got there. Yes. Yes. Um, yeah. I mean, for a long time, you know, it was, uh, not until I went carnivore that I, I was like, you know, I keep messing up steak. Like I would buy 
expensive steak, cheap steak, and I would still mess it up. And then I was just like, come hell or high water, I am going to learn how to make steak. And um, it still took a long time. (laughs) But I finally, well, so again, my friend Jack Rustin, he wrote this book, like how to cook the perfect steak. And um, actually reading that helped me understand all the mistakes that I was making and how to fix them. And so now I can make, I'm not going to say perfect, but a fantastic state. And um, yeah, so I think sometimes it just, you you know, you just need a little bit, um, you just need somebody explaining it to you in the way that makes sense for you. And, um, you know, and, and so that way is different for different people. You know, for me, I like the sciencey stuff. So it helped me to like, um, you know, I used to look at like America's, um, uh, test kitchen and, uh, you know, they like explain, um, you know, the science behind uh, how they make stuff and why it, you know, why certain things happen when you're cooking it. And so, um, but understanding that can help you then apply that same knowledge to a different piece of meat that, you know, maybe has the same properties. So you know how to cook, um, you know, you know that you can cook like a brisket and um, a chuck roast in a similar way and get, you know, great results. Um, even though, you know, the recipes might be different, but you know that you can't substitute, you know, like London broil for, for chuck roast because the, the, the cooking methods required are completely different and they won't overlap. So there you go. Um, (laughs) Mr. Rogglesworth, yes, you need to find a carnivore woman who loves cooking (laughs) and you're welcome, Kimberly. Um, Johnny G says, I don't like how the tongue taste buds looking, look, uh, looking back at me. Yeah. The tongue looks like a tongue and, um, that's a little bit hard to get over. So you gotta, you know, once you get that off, like the inside of the tongue, that's the part you eat. You don't, you don't eat the outer part that has the taste buds on it. Um, but you, you gotta look at that until it's, you know, you get it off. So I don't know. Um, LSJ digital says, should I watch my intake of smoked meat from my smoker? I was under the impression that smoking food could be part carcinogenic. Yeah, I don't know. You know, they say that and they say, you know, grilling meat is carcinogenic and, you know, meat is carcinogenic. I don't know. Cooking is like, um, something humans have been doing for a very long time. So, I have find it hard to believe that, you know, cooking over an open fire is, um, you know, is a problem for us. And as far as smoking goes, I don't know. I mean, if, if you're eating smoking, smoked food for every meal every day for years, I, I don't know, maybe I would be concerned about that. But, um, you know, if it's just part of your repertoire and you're eating other things, I don't know, I, I wouldn't, I probably wouldn't worry about that. And uh, when I do get a backyard and get a smoker, I will be smoking around the clock and I will be eating smoked foods around the clock. So I don't know. Um, Okay. Uh, Kimberly, you like uh, fried eggs, but your daughters like scrambled eggs. Yeah. I put a post up about that this week. I just, um, I prefer scrambled. So there you go. Uh, wonderfully made, uh, 2009, uh, tuna salad is tuna salad, uh, carnivore. Well, it depends on what's in your tuna salad. So if it is salt and uh, pepper and mayo and maybe even some dill and, uh, tarragon, maybe a squeeze of lemon, um, maybe a little paprika, um, you know, that is a uh, carnivore. And, um, we talked about making bacon earlier today. Um, I would really, um, try to refrain from using regular mayo because it's vegetable oil. Oh my gosh. I'm going to have to let that siren go by. Um, So I would refrain from the mayo, um, uh, or even some people try making mayo from avocado oil. Um, 
you know, so that might be an option, uh, you know, think about that. So, uh, but yeah, tuna salad can be carnivore. Even, um, well, some people also include low sugar fruits in their carnivore. So I think dill pickles would be okay. So uh, I would not use regular relish because that's sweetened. But if you, you can um, get dill pickles and chop those up really fine and you can make that your own relish to add to um, the tuna salad. And um, man, that sounds so good. You know, tomorrow, tuna salad for lunch. I'm going to make this and I'm going to get some of that fish sauce. <laughs> um, Douglas says, I would look at the rubs and sauces before I worry about smoked meats. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, there's a lot of, uh, old, old cooking methods, um, that, you know, humans have been doing for thousands of years. And if it were such a problem, like it would have become a problem. It would have presented itself. You know, I don't think it's such a problem. So I'm not too worried about it. Um, Okay, so Mandel says Isaac uh, wanted wild venison. He bestowed the blessings lost to beans for whatever meat was in the barn. Yes, there's bad stuff in the water, but there's way worse in the soda pop. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, yeah, oh, Kimberly, thank you. So there is a keto mayo made by Prime Foods with avocado oil. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, there are other options. And I have heard of people using, um, I mean, this is not... Uh, you know, exactly carnivore, but people use, um, you can buy coconut oil that is always um, liquid. Um, I don't know, it's sort of strained. So it's always in liquid form and you can use that to make mayo. So then when you put it in the fridge, it doesn't get hard the way um, bacon A's would uh, or lard would. So that's something to think about. Um, okay. And Mandel says, uh, smoker beats anything you'd buy from, the, uh, from the house on the curve using a smoker would, uh, definitely land you in the A range, uh, over most of the rest of us. Yeah. Agreed. Um, oh yeah. Maria's dollhouse. Treat yourself to tuna salad and pork rinds. That is a capital idea. I love that. I love that. All right, folks, we have had a, a really amazing conversation and um, I, you know, I just am so glad that, uh, you know, you guys have such amazing ideas and I hope those of you who are new and who are listening that you're getting some amazing ideas from what's here and, uh, and if you decide to make your stuff, post it on Instagram and tag me so I can see it because I love to see new creations and new concoctions. Uh, all right. So everyone have a great evening and I will see you on Tuesday for the live premiere of the next interview. All right, everybody have a great one. Bye. Oh, I'm sorry. Melanated meat fueled mama. I'll see you next time. All right. Bye.